Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Millennium Stefano and Infinity Sevens Pyre. It is a TVZ on Taldrim Altar, and Stefano, he needs no introduction. This man is a legend right now. He has got like a 90% win rate on EU, which is absolutely ridiculous. He is gonna be competing in the Lone Star Clash Tournament this weekend, and he is, I think, favored to win that, but I think it is gonna be Stefano versus Polt in the finals, with Polt beating Stefano, unfortunately, I don't think Stefano can beat Polt. Polt just has a very scary TVZ. We will be seeing Pyre going to go for that 10 Supply Depot, and Stefano most likely will go for a 15 Hatch, because that is what most Zerg players do. And, uh... Stefano, he is not known for his drone scouting, which is a little bit odd for a player to not be so diligent on scouting and yet have such a high win rate. Because you think if, like, on Tal de Malta in these cross positions, he would have no way of seeing, like, a proxy to Barracks play. And you think that would just counter him pretty darn hard because he almost never drone scouts. But... Somehow, he still has a 90% win rate. When that happens, he manages to still win the game. And Pyre, I don't know too much about him. He is on Team Infinity 7, which is absolutely awesome. It is one of those smaller teams unheard of. Well, maybe not unheard of. They are definitely known. Whoever knows Infinity 7 absolutely loves them. They're like that uh, family team, the home, the small team, not the big corporation. They don't have too much money, or at least I don't think they do. They're sending a Korean. They're only Korean, I think. I think Mental is left. I'm not positive about that. But they are sending Crazy Moving, who was GSL Code A. Axlav, I think they're sending. Honor, Pyre. And there's one other person they are sending over to MLG Columbus, which is absolutely awesome. With a team with no big sponsors, I think DeviantArt and SteelSeries are Infinity 7's only sponsors. And I don't know if Inf uh, SteelSeries is that big of one. I know DeviantArt is pretty darn huge. Pyre is going to be, uh, well, Stefano said, oops, it looks like that spawning pool was, uh, after the Overlord. So Stefano definitely, uh, being a little bit late on that pool, but he's like, who cares? I, I'm still good, and that's what's good about Stefano. He has um, the best mentality ever, and by that, I mean he has absolutely no mentality. Nothing gets in his head. He just plays the game straight face like he's playing poker, and uh, it definitely does help him. He never really tilts, which is pretty amazing, and as I say that, I do recall a long time ago, before Stefano was known, he did kind of go t on tilt on a tournament and six pull twice in a row and uh, just throw an entire series. I don't exactly remember what series that was, but that was a very long time ago. Since then, he has improved. Ever since the IPL, he has just been a absolute beast. Pyre, he is stacking quite a bit of gas right now. He's over 100 gas and not building a reactor right now, getting this command center. So I don't know if I like this build just because, again, he has a lot of gas. He does not need to be mining from this re uh, refinery so early. And Stefano, he is getting a spine crawler at 4.30, it looks like that thing started. That is relatively early. You don't need to start the spine crawler until 5.05 .05 to have it done in time for the Hellions to come. Stefano, I don't know, maybe he's just a little shaken after getting the pool late, just getting that early spine, because there's no way he can get enough lings out to defend against early aggression. If it was like a two-axe play or something like that again, Stefano now just finally going to be scouting and does get that one ling in and did see a tech lab on that barracks with a Hellion out, so he may be thinking it's going to be some type of Marauder Hellion all-in, because that's generally what happens when you see that and see Hellions. But we do see Pyre switching that off, gonna be going for Blue Flames, and then such an odd play, you never see Blue Flames rushed anymore, that this could actually catch Stefano off good. We'll see what he ends up doing, because this does look like a Marauder Hellion all-in kind of play, but he does see an expansion up, which just makes this very funky. I don't think Stefano has any way he can predict exactly what is happening in Pyre's base. Pyre is going to be getting his second orbital right now, along with three more barracks that will put him at four racks. And this blue flame Hellion, it looks like he is just building Marines, which is very nice because the big weakness to the Marauder Hellion is Muta play. Mutas just absolutely demolish it because both of them don't shoot up, and it hits right at 10 minutes just before Mutas comes out. So if Stefano 
ends up skipping speed. Does he? No, he does not. He already has speed, but he is getting his lair relatively early. That thing will be finished at the 8-minute mark, so Aspire will be finished, I think, at the 10-minute if he ends up going for this. And I'm just saying, if he ends up going for this, I know he's an Infestor-type player, but seeing what uh, Pyra has and what Polt does to Stefano, I am thinking he is going to be going for Spire just on the off chance that it is indeed Marauder Hellion. Because uh, Infestors, they don't really do that well against this build. Or not this build that Pyra is doing, but it doesn't do well against Marauder Hellion. Infestor play would absolutely do great against Blue Flame Hellion and Marines because Blue Flame Hellions are not that good against Lings when they get Fungal Growth. We do have Pyre going to be taking a tech lab. That will most likely be getting stim as he does land it right at 100 gas. But uh, there we go. A plus liftoff as the Muslim would be saying. We do have a bunch of Hellions moving across the map. That lair is done. He is getting his Evo Chamber and a Mako Hat. So it doesn't look like he will be going into Spire type play. Bunch of Lings will be coming up. Trying to get a scout on and another A plus lift up by Pyre. Lifting up all their supply depots. Not letting Stefano really get all that much of a scout, but he is taking out quite a few SCVs, or is he? Looks like four have gone down, their SCVs are going back to mine, and Stefano does see that blue flame, and he is getting a Spire. So he is actually getting double Spires, which is a little bit odd. I don't know exactly what Stefano is doing. It looks like he's going into Muta play, but when you go for this double Spire, you really do cut back into your Muta production because that Spire does cost 200 gas, which is two Mutas, and then both of those upgrades, I believe, cost 100 each. So that's another two Mutas. Maybe they cost 150. We will be finding out. But that is four Mutas right off the bat, and that makes any timing attack against Mutas so ridiculously strong because, I mean, you have 400 gas just sitting there idle. And that is a lot of gas at the 10 minute or 11 minute mark. But Pyre not going to be doing any type of timing attack. Instead, he is going to be doing a blue flame hellion drop. And we'll see exactly how many drones this does kill. He is up at zero. And this uh, does go unscouted. Stefano way, way out of position with those lings. And these Hellions are going to be coming in, and they will most likely see the spot. We have a few Hellions going to be positioning up at the front, just because Stefano hasn't seen this. He's like, okay, well, might as well set up for a pincer attack. Well, not a pincer attack, a pincer harassment with these Hellions. Going to throw this again, take out those uh, Tumas while these Hellions do go in. We do have the Lings going to go off, get us around on those Hellions. Pyre may be doing a little bit too much. That little Hellion thing was absolutely unneeded, but you can see Stefano... Lining those drones up, losing quite a few, up to 14 drones killed. Those mutas have came out, and uh, 15 drones killed. But mutas are now out, so Pyre definitely knows about that. Did he see the double spire? Yes, he did, so he knows that it is going to be massive amounts of upgrades. And uh, I can't actually see if that is 100 or 150, because Stefano just so quick at upgrading that, but we will just go with me, you trust me. It does cut into his mute account, but Stefano being Stefano already has 9 mutas out at the 11 minute mark. He doesn't have any banelings, and that's how he did it. It looks like just has a handful of links, and he's also getting carapace armor. So Stefano definitely playing this a little bit risky. He did open himself up to a huge timing window right there. Getting all those upgrades and that double spire does cut into a lot of his gas that he has to defend against Maybe Marine Tank, but Stefano knew it wasn't going to be Marine Tank. He knew it was going to be Marine Hellion and was just confident he could stop that. But if Pyre had been going Marine Tank and sieged up down here, I don't think Stefano would have been able to stop that cost efficiently. However, again, Stefano knew that wasn't happening, so that is completely out of the question. And that was out of his mind when he ended up going for this. So, pretty nice play by Stefano right now. He is getting a hatch way down there. And that armor upgrade, I'm really curious how this is going to pay off. I think it does give Mutas plus one armor per upgrade, and yes it does. So that means Missile Turrets will do two less damage, and Thors will do four less damage per upgrade. So if these Mutas do manage to get up to 3-3 three, three very quickly, like Stefano is known to do, he favors his upgrades so heavily, as you do see him going for 1-1 one, one on his Lings while he already has 1-1 one, one on his Mutas. But if he does get up to 3-3 three, three, when the Thor comes out, the Thor will do 12 less damage per volley to these mutas. And that is definitely pretty done big. And those Hellions get shut down by these mutas. The worker count is 60 to 65. So Pyre 
Definitely ahead in that, and uh, doesn't look like he has oversaturated. It looks like he is at that magic number of SCVs right now, but he definitely has to be taking his third base. He already is going to be landing that orbital command. And he's going to have a pretty darn good econ. We do have Stefano on four bases. Pyre is going to be on four bases, but Pyre does have the economical advantage with more SCVs and those mules. A lot of those Hellions, though, just going to be going down. And the Marines are coming. They are at two. Oh, no, just one, one. 2 is not on the way while those meters are going to be at 2-1, or 2-2 two, two, relatively soon as he is rushing those upgrades. But keep in mind, even though Marines will be behind in upgrades with those medevacs, Marines will still beat muters. I have seen plenty of Idra to know that muters will never beat Marines no matter what the muter count is, no matter what the upgrade advantage is. Marines with medevacs will just beat muters hands out. As long as the Marines are in a decent number, we do have Pyro coming down here, lead, leading with the way with the Hellion. Trying to scout for base, and a bunch of Lings do come in. This Hellion does uh, not get microed at all. Only goes up to three kills, so did not do that much damage, but a lot of meters going down. I can't even click on the meters because they go down so quick. Another stim, and like I was saying, muters just will not beat Marines. Not any day. And Marines are going to be falling back. And that's a little bit silly, in my opinion. Mutas, they cost 100 100. Marines cost 50. Yet, Marines do beat Mutas in a head on fight. But uh, they do have Stim. That Stim pack just helps them so much because Mutas are so fragile. And it looks like Stefano getting that armor upgrade to try to make them less fragile. He is going to be at 2 2 almost immediately. And that is pretty darn impressive. 16 minutes of the game at 2-2. And this makes when he does transition into Brute Lords very scary as he is getting a Hive right now. We'll see if he favors getting a Greater Spire or just rushing 3-3. I am really curious. And also, get that melee attack on his Lings. And generally with Mew to play, you even see the Lings falling behind in upgrades. But Stefano, he is favoring those upgrades so heavily, not letting that ever fall. Going this Lost Tap, Stefano is not cost effective. Muta play generally isn't. You try to get an economic advantage with Muta play. And he is going to be coming in here. That Missile Toad again doing four less damage to each Muta just because of that armor upgrade. And that is relatively big. Lest these Mutas just laugh at Missile Toads as they do come in. And uh, picking off all those Missile Toads. And that will force Pyre to kind of stay in his base. Because now if he leaves, those Mutas can do massive amounts of damage to those SCVs almost immediately. But Pyre, it doesn't look like he is going to be listening. He is gearing up to leave his base, chasing those Mutas down. The Mutas are going to be checking for a fourth base. They don't see it, so he knows he has contained Pyre to just three bases. And will he see the command center lifting up? It looks like he wants to kill off some Hellions, because those Hellions are going to be the bane of his lings with those blue flames in those numbers. And uh, he does see the fourth base going to get some damage on it. Will he actually be able to take this down? That command center definitely falling very quick. But those Marines do stim on over. Now he's going to get a conga line of SCVs. Losing a few meters. Did not kill that many SCVs. Stefano not doing that much damage with his meter play. He is still losing more drones than SCVs he has killed. But taking out this tank is relatively nice. Marines do stim to get in that bunker. Muta's just going to be coming on in. And now sniping the tech labs to take out the tank production. And now going to get the reactors to take down the Marine production. Just land the burn. Trusting that Pyre will not upgrade that, or maybe trusting that his spread attack from that Glaive Rooms will just go and finish off the job. We do have this 17, 15, 10 seconds. It is going to burn to the ground. So Stefano does take out three of those uh, reactors and a tech lab. Not too bad. Does cut in the production quite a bit. We do have a fifth base coming up for Stefano and a sixth. Those Hellions do immediately scout that, and I just have to emphasize how scary Stefano's Brood Lords are going to be whenever he gets it, because they're going to be 3-3 three, three with plus 2 on that melee, so not only are the Brood Lords going to be upgraded, but those Broodlings themselves are also going to be upgraded. And he's going to have a very scary transition into Brood Lords once that does hit, sniping those Hellions immediately, because again, that is the bane to the Lings. And now he is going to try to pick off these tanks, I believe, or maybe, is he going to go for it? It looks like he is. There are plenty of Missile Dirts here. That is... A lot of Mr. It looks like seven. There's Mutas just going to go pile the way in there. Again, Mr. Dress do not do that much damage to those upgraded Mutas. And Stefano is going to go for this PF. SCVs have been pulled off the line to repair. Pyro is setting up right here. Going to throw a scan to take out these Creep Tumors. And Stefano does take out the PF, getting about 12 worker kills. Not too bad. Very nice trade. 
there we go. A scan does come down, takes out those creep tumors. So now Stefano cannot see when Pyro unseizes, which is huge information. We do have a handful of Marines. Just me taking this one out. This guy is just giving away, doing those drugs, and doing absolutely nothing. He is not a high functioning junkie at all. And that Marine gives all the Marines a bad name, but Stefano is going to catch Pyro. No, he is not going to catch him out of position. Thought he was going to come in. He had a lot of Banelings just waiting. I'll put a target on those Banelings because Pyro is going to have to target those Banelings down with his siege tanks, especially because he doesn't have that many tanks. Only three tanks. And he has to target those Banelings down if he wants to be successful. Drop is going to be going off because Stefano did clean the few handful of Marines up with those Lings. And those tanks are now in siege. Mutas are going to come in, want to snipe those tanks, but they just can't see. The Mutas are at 3-3, and there we go. Tanks have to target on those Banelings, and there we go. A nice target on that, but the Banelings still roll in. Marines have a decent split and do end up cleaning up all those Banelings, and only Mutas are left. Those Marines ha still have some medevacs, and Stefano does lose two bases and cannot handle the Marine force now, despite being at 3-3 with his Mutas. He is getting 54 lings right now, though, and that is definitely a lot of lings. Pyre is at 2-2. Two, two. And Stefano is going to be charging in here with a bunch of lings and his mutas. And there's mutas not really taking any damage. The marines are attacking the lings, and that allows the mutas to just do so, so much damage. Mutas do clean up and now going to be taking out a medevac, and this is that awkward time. Well, maybe not. I would say this is the awkward time, and there's so many mutas that Pyre just can't handle it. But he does have a handful of Marines back at home, keeping drops here, stopping this base from going up. And now that handful of Marines is going to go down. The Muta count is so high, and that Marine count just being so low. But over here, Pyro still has plenty of Marines. 152 supplied to 190. Stefano is going for 3-3 on his Lings. He's going to have 3-3 flying and 3-3 Lings, or ground, at uh, the 25-minute mark which is pretty ridiculous. Generally, you don't see players have 3-3 three, three anything around this time, and Stefano is working on 3-3 three, three for his ground already. Long-term has had that for his air. We do have Pyro on moving out, but Stefano going to be coming in with all these mutas, just laughing again at those missile turrets, and now he'll laugh at all those buildings, or tech labs and reactors, the add-ons, just going down immediately. These mutas going to clean up this handful of Marines. That Marine count... Is not high enough to engage. 41 mutas, 81 supply in mutas versus the 71 supply in marines. But all the marines are down here, keeping that one base down. Stefano is going to be taking expansion. Pyro does scout that immediately. And the mutas are just going after the production right now. Now, if he takes out the production, all he has to do is take out this handful of marines. And that will be game over. Because he will have the muta count to do the everything. And uh, he does have Ling Blings back here. Bunch of tanks are siege up. The tanks again will have to target fire on these Bane Links to be successful again. Mutas will not be watching those because that, I mean, you just see chaos. Right here is where it's going to be game deciding. Probably game deciding already with this Muta count in this base. But if Pyro can somehow drop over here and somehow go back and defend his third base, he is still kind of in this or defend this base. He just has to defend one base and do a drop to kill off this base. But it looks like he is going to be coming in. This base is going to be going down. Stefano just massing up. He's going to be sacking this one base. He knows he is doing the damage over here with his mutas. He's like, okay, both of us are not going to have a base. I have the production with mutas. You cannot build anything. So if I take this force out, and as you do see Stefano doing that, Pyro caught a little bit out of position, overextending himself. Those tanks wouldn't siege. The Baneleys just came in. Tore those Marines apart, and again, once those Marines went down, Stefano had this Muta count that nothing Pyro had could end up stopping Stefano. And that was some brilliant play by Stefano, despite uh, him going for Mutas, which is an odd decision. Going over this Lost Tab, you do see uh, Stefano losing less in that game. And that is not something you generally see against Terran players, especially when a Muta player goes Ling Bling, just because to defend against Marines, you have to use Banelings, which sacrifices your army, which doesn't really help you in the units lost. Yeah, you kill Marines, but you also lose your army at the same time. But you have a better econ, and you depend on outproducing your opponent. And while I'm saying this, I am just trying to find out where the heck I saved this replay, because I cannot find it for the life of me to go into this. 
And I'm really interested to see, like, how much... Oh, we can just go to the spending tab. You can see the spending. Stefano looks like he spent 10k more on the army, 3k, or 2.4... Uh, yeah, 2.4k less on tech, which he's Zerg, of course he did. And a lot more on econ with 4k more on econ. Not too bad. And here we go. Going to be opening the game in SC2 Gears. And we'll be pulling this up. So, going over to the Injex, the 10-minute uh, mark, this is the uh, specialty, 5.4 seconds, so good. And that's better than Stefano's average, but in defense of uh, all good Zerg players, Stefano did go for a late pull, so his Injex did start later. So he had one less Injex to worry about, but again, that doesn't matter. Stefano was just on this game, he has been playing a lot, definitely training. If you've been watching my cast, you have been seeing his Injex generally average between 7 and 9 at the 10-minute mark. And now 5.4, so he's definitely improved there. Over here, a little bit funky. 13.6 average at the end of the game. He goes to 35 seconds, but uh, he was maxed out. And he was playing with mutas, and it's very hard to do injects and mutas. Trust me, you have to have a lot of micro to use mutas. That's why a lot of Zerg players don't, because in Festers, they're a lot easier to use than mutas and be effective. And uh, your injects do uh, fall behind when you go for muta play. And, uh, can we see this? Rank 1. Can we see his games? No, we can't, but you can go up to SC2 ranks if you want and see his record. He has 146 wins. Can't see his losses, unfortunately. But, uh, going over the micro... Holy... What the heck was he doing right there? That is Stefano at 2153, spiking up to 600 APM. He wasn't using Infestor, so he wasn't doing the middle mouse. What was he doing? And we'll look at the end. I know some people don't really care. That's just something, my curiosity, just wondering why he spiked that high. So if you want to see it, just stick to the end. Go into this build's tech. This is not going to be too interesting. I mean, the ability groups. Stefano, he had 54 Banelings. Three Greater Spire Morse. Three, that's a little bit odd, but okay. Not too special there. Did have some bows and unbows. Don't, maybe that was on Banelings. I don't know exactly what that was on. But uh, 13 scans, 22 stems, that's it. That's all the interesting things we have to look at that, because there was no energy using units. Uh, let's see, what can we do? Research. Just trying to think what we want to look at. Resource spending rate, again, okay. So here it is. This is why his APM spiked up. He was building a lot of something. I don't know what it was right here. Can we go to unit production? There's got to be something. There's got to be something for production. Action distribute, unit tiers, so you saw spending rate. Produced army supply, no. Productions, here we go. Two, two. Go a little bit over. Seven, 27. So it looked like he was just mashing to build units at that time with that high APM. Doesn't really make sense, but okay. Anyways, unit tiers, you can see, kind of weird graph. Pyre, you can see how much he favored marines in his army. Stefano, all the muta is mutalisks. And you can see, he kind of built them in spurts. And at the very beginning, he did go with 16 mutas between this time. So, did have that muta count relatively high. So let's go to the 10 minute mark. How much gas was he saving up? At 10 minutes, so this is generally when, make sure I'm over here on the game, okay, this is generally when an attack is going to be coming. Stefano, he has both these washouts, so we'll go, we'll go to 8 minutes, see what Stefano sees, because he has a thousand gas stored up in the bank, and uh, if you knew anything, you know when you have a lot of gas, you are definitely vulnerable to timings. So he comes in here, this is what probably tells him what is safe to do. So he comes in here, doesn't see anything. Okay, does he see these Marines? He had to see them when he got taken out. Okay. So let's go in Stefano's vision. So we're just going to be watching exactly what he ends up seeing, because this is definitely an odd read from his opponent. It's a perfect read. Gets those gases, so that is before he knows it's going to be... Um... 
Murado Helen. He could still be thinking that. Maybe I'm wrong. They think that. I don't know. But he does come in here. Doesn't see those Marines. And now he's like, okay, I'm attacking you. I don't really see anything. And then he sees everything come back. So maybe he just says, you had your units. You were moving out because I didn't see them in your base. And then I started killing your workers and you pulled back. So now the timing you were trying to hit is just not going to work anymore. So he's going to get a few watchtowers and then just keep storing up that gas. And when do these fires finish? Is it the 10 minute mark when I thought it would be? Yeah, right at 10 minutes, the spires do finish. Stefano has a thousand gas when they do finish, and a thousand minerals. That is definitely a lot, and now we can finally see... Hundreds, yeah, 100 150. So, definitely a lot of uh, gas does go into upgrades. He's also getting that ground carapace, and still manages to have a thousand going into the army. You see 30 lings versus the 16 marines and one medevac. But, uh... Yeah, it's definitely an odd read from Stefano, just to say I can save all that gas and be perfectly safe when it looked like it could be Murado Hellion, but he guess he knew how to defend it. He's like, okay, all I have to do is defend it, have mutas out, get 10 out with this gas. You can see 76 out of 94 supply, hold the push off, and I can do a lot of damage and win the game. Maybe that was his thought pattern, I don't know. And now, what was it, 2651 we want to look at? Oh, uh, no, 2251 for that APM spike, I think it was. And I don't know if the game was showing that entire time. And that is horrible. I hope it was. Okay, maybe it wasn't here, but it's not really that important. If you want to find out, you can look at the replay. Take care, guys. I hope you enjoyed the cast, and peace out. Sorry if I forgot the overlay. Hopefully my words were descriptive enough. Take care. Thanks for watching.